Hey, welcome back to another episode of Strange Cases. It's exactly what it sounds like. Sometimes when I'm working on other cases, I come across some really crazy news articles that are definitely worth talking about, but not really long enough to justify their own video. So once in a while, I combine them all into one of these bigger videos. So sit back and enjoy like eight or nine cases I've come across. Nine, I think. Let's go. I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a service that I've really come to enjoy. I've been getting their fragrances every month for a while now. Scentbird is a service that sends you scents like these each month. Scentbird is really changing the game when it comes to how people shop for and discover new fragrances. It's great whether you have no knowledge of this stuff like me or if you're just wanting to try something new. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $17. You can pick what you want each month as well. They have all sorts of perfumes, colognes, and even a lot of unisex options out there. You'll get a month's supply of each one, so you can try out a bunch without committing to a huge bottle that could cost 300 to 500 bucks at the store. Each bottle has a lot of volume to it, and it takes me quite a long time to even use it all. So, forgive my pronunciation here, but this month I got Leighton by Parfums de Marly, Cassiopeia by Tiziana Terenzi, and Terra by Vince Camuto. Terra smells pretty elegant, like something I'd wear to a formal event of some kind. But out of the three, I'd say Leighton is probably my favorite. It's really subtle, but smells great at the same time. It's something I wouldn't mind wearing often. So why don't you try it out and see which ones you're into? If you don't have any ideas, you can even find your scent by taking a simple quiz on Scentbird. It will give you a good match for you based on your results, something you can kind of make your own thing. Hop on the Scentbird and use my code DT55 to get a solid 55% off your first month. Using my promo code, it's only a little bit over $7. Give it a look. First off, we have Warren Police Arrest Man Trying to Avoid Sex with Girlfriend. So let's go out to the town of Warren, Ohio. Have we ever been to Ohio? I, I don't really think so. Well, we're gonna go now. People were puzzled, to say the least, when the Warren Police came out to file charges against a man who apparently had locked himself in a hot car during a heat wave in order to avoid having sex with his girlfriend. You're probably thinking, what? Why? Well, so was everybody else, evidently. The 24-year-old man named Christian Collins was officially charged with counts of obstructing official business, resisting arrest, trespassing, and domestic violence. So the story was, according to a police report, that a 24-year-old woman had called the police out to her home in South Federal Drive on one hot Thursday afternoon after her boyfriend, Christian Collins, went and locked himself inside of her Kia Optima and then refused to get out of the car despite the sweltering weather outside. The first officer arrived to the scene and talked with Christian through the passenger side window that was open a few inches. The only window in the car that was open, I might add. The police report states that Christian got into the car to avoid having sex with his girlfriend, who apparently always wanted to do it despite the apartment being way too hot. Yeah, that was really his only reasoning, and he locked himself in a hot car to avoid the hot apartment, so... So the police went to his girlfriend, and surprisingly enough, she confirmed that yes, this was true and this is what went down. One can only imagine their reaction. After a while, some more police officers arrived, including one of their supervisors who tried to talk Christian into getting out of the car. It didn't work. The supervisor eventually tried to stick his hand inside of the open window in order to unlock the door. When Christian realized he was about to do this, he hurried to roll up the window. However, the officer did manage to unlock the car during that brief window, pun intended, and got the door open. Christian still refused to leave his girlfriend's car, so the police had to drag him out by force. Christian then claimed to the police that he was injured, so before anything else, he was taken to St. Joseph Hospital for treatment. Afterwards, he was booked into jail. Christian's girlfriend told the police that he had also threatened to hit her during all of this, so he was also charged with domestic violence in the end. Christian pled not guilty to the charges while he was having a video arraignment in Warren Municipal Court Friday. Another court hearing is supposedly going to happen sometime pretty soon. Next, we have father and son guilty of chasing Thief with a 27-inch ninja sword and stabbing him to death. So as you may assume from the headline, a father and son who chased down a burglar with a ninja sword were just recently found guilty of his murder. The father, a man named David King, who was 55, and his son, a 19-year-old man named Edward King, who was 19, killed the thief, a guy named Neil Charles, after he apparently attempted to steal some property and vehicles out in St. Edmund's, Suffolk in England. The police actually received a call from David King himself at around 3.55 a.m. on June 20th of 2021. During the call, he claimed that a man had been trying to break into his car on the Morton Hall estate. David himself admitted that he had stabbed and wounded the man during a struggle that took place. 
The police rushed out and found David a ways away from his home where the stabbing had actually taken place. Nearby, an injured Neil Charles was laying on the ground with a severe stab wound to the chest. David King was arrested then and there that morning. Once more details about the story started to come out, the police also went and arrested his son, Edward, later that day. Neil Charles didn't make it and died in the hospital on June 22nd. The post-mortem report revealed that he had died of a 12-centimeter stab wound to the chest. The police later learned that the circumstances of the stabbing were a little bit different than what they had been told. Rather than a struggle or a fight taking place, the father had actually seen the possible thief on one of their CCTV cameras. It was then that they armed themselves with the sword and decided to go perform some street justice. David King brought with him a double-edged knife. Edward equipped himself with the 27-inch ninja sword previously mentioned. He used said sword to slash the tires of Neil's bike, which he left at the scene. The two then chased him down and eventually stabbed him, ending up a ways away from their property. The police dug a little bit deeper and found that both David and Edward had quite a fascination with weapons. They had both previously expressed online that if they ever encountered any thieves, they intended to deal with them themselves. This revelation changed things a little bit. The Ipswich Crown Court had been told that both of the men denied that they had killed Neil Charles intentionally. The prosecution said that their acts could be considered nothing more than an act of vigilantism. The father and son are still in custody and are to be sentenced sometime in the future. And now we have a headline that I'm going to have to clean up a little bit to please YouTube. Woman cuts off her boyfriend's thing for attempted forcing himself on her 14-year-old daughter. Oh boy, here's an interesting one that recently took place out in Uttar Pradesh in India. The case is, as it goes, pretty well summed up by the headline. As you guessed, a woman out in India had, according to reports, cut off her boyfriend's member after he attempted to force himself on her 14-year-old daughter. It's pretty straightforward. The Times India reported that the mother, who chose to remain unnamed, returned home from work one evening when she saw her boyfriend, who lived with her, in the midst of attacking her daughter. The mother told the Times of India, He even attacked me while I was trying to save my daughter, so I brought a knife from the kitchen and chopped off his private parts to teach him a lesson. I have no regrets for what I did. The police out in Uttar Pradesh, which is an area just east of New Delhi, swiftly went out and arrest the 32-year-old boyfriend for attempting to force himself on the daughter as he was being treated at a hospital for his grievous wound. The police didn't clearly come out and say whether the mother would be charged with anything in the end, but nothing has happened so far, so probably not. According to Newsweek, the area of Uttar Pradesh has a pretty dark track record when it comes to crime, especially crimes similar in nature to what the boyfriend was attempting to do. Texas woman charged with throwing boyfriend's mother's ashes into lake in 2020. So back to the United States, let's take a look at Fort Worth, Texas, where just recently a woman has been charged with abuse of a corpse after a 2020 incident in which she allegedly took the ashes of her boyfriend's deceased mother and threw them into a lake. Again, you're probably wondering, what? Why? And so is everybody else. The woman, whose name was Augustine Gladney, a 40-year-old resident of Fort Worth, was arrested a while after she went and admitted that she had done this to her boyfriend, a man named Ernest Smith. Ernest Smith, who is 38 himself, went to the police back in June of 2020 and informed them that he came home one night only to find that the urn that contained his mother's ashes was missing. According to recent reports, he told the police at the time that, yeah, he and Augustine were dating, but things were pretty rocky and they weren't really going too well at the time. The urn remained missing all the way up until just recently in May of 2022, when Ernest overheard Augustine on the phone with her daughter, who was staying with them at the time. During that phone call, Augustine let it slip to her daughter that she had thrown the urn containing the mother's ashes into Lake Worth, which is both a reservoir and a recreation area in the city. Then, Ernest said to the police that he wasn't able to get in contact with Augustine until nearly around midnight that night. It was then that he confronted her and she admitted, via text, that she had indeed thrown his mom's ashes into the lake. Although the crime made major headlines back in May, it seems to have resurfaced just recently on TikTok after this particular video went viral. The video, very reminiscent of the case, was captioned with, He cheated, so I threw his mom's ashes into the river, and showed a woman dumping an urn full of ashes off of a bridge. While a lot of people commenting on the video thought that the woman in the video was Augustine, a lot of other people on the internet have identified the woman as actually being a comedian who was merely performing a skit. Police haven't commented on whether or not the video is legitimate or even related to the case. 
Either way, Augustine Gladney faces about a year in prison and a fine of up to $4,000 on the charge, which is only a misdemeanor. Here's a whammy. Man allegedly sawed off leg as daughter watched. Alright, so just recently, a while ago, police investigators came out to say that a father chopped off his leg in front of his daughter, which sent her into a state of shock and trauma, understandably. A man named Shannon Cox is facing a felony charge, that of endangering the welfare of a minor in connection with the incident that happened back on August 2nd out in Arkansas. The 48-year-old father reportedly used a chop saw to lop off a big part of his right leg in front of his 5-year-old daughter. The unnamed young girl went on to the Boone County Sheriff's Office to say that, yep, she did indeed see this happen. This was after a member of the Sheriff's Office went out and discovered Mr. Cox, completely naked, missing a good chunk of his leg out in front of a home. The deputies then followed a blood trail back to the chop saw and found the amputated portion of the leg right there alongside it. Cox's 30-year-old wife told the police that she had left home the night before after she had been fearing for her life. But she left her daughter behind despite these fears. She told the police that her husband had been acting very oddly, and despite fearing him enough to run from home, she had no indication that her daughter was unsafe, according to her. According to an affidavit, the wife, Sandy Cox, said he was telling her that he was Jesus Christ and that she needed to get right with the Lord. Sandy said he then became violent toward her and said he was Satan. He told Sandy that he was going to twist her head off and continued to make verbal threats. Sandy was also then charged with a felony count of endangering the welfare of a minor due to leaving the kid in this situation. Man clings to back of semi-truck for 130 miles. So back out in the Midwest, a man in Kansas was charged with joyriding, although the ride wasn't as pleasant as you might imagine. But hey, you probably knew that from the headline. The police say that the man, a guy named Dustin Slocum, had climbed up onto the back of a tractor trailer at a shipping yard out in Wichita. He then proceeded to hold on to the door bar on the back of the semi for about 130 miles down Interstate 35. The truck driver had been completely unaware that someone had been riding along with him on his journey. That was until he stopped around Guthrie, Oklahoma, only after some other drivers got his attention and convinced him to pull over at around 2.30 a.m. one morning. Police had been made well aware of the incident after many people had called 911 reporting that a man was hanging off the back of a moving semi-truck. However, it took them a while to actually track down the truck in question. I mean, it was moving at highway speeds. Police did come to find the truck, and they saw that Dustin Slocum was standing on the uh, bumper of the truck, the, the bumper part, while hanging onto the bar up above. Sorry, I don't, I don't know semi-truck terminology. A trooper by the name of Eric Foster with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol said that Dustin was lucky to even be alive after an episode like that. It's good that we were able to get him stopped and keep that man that was on the back of that safe because it could have been a fatal mistake, he said. In the end, Dustin was charged with public intoxication as well. The previous trooper went on to say that there were a couple of different stories as to exactly why Dustin was hanging onto the back of that truck. According to a local news page, Dustin had claimed that he had been looking for his wife. I, I suppose he thought she was walking along the interstate and when he came across her, he'd just jump off? I don't know. Border Patrol found more than pulp inside these pumpkins. This is really the perfect story for the spooky season. Hell, I should have just made this into my Halloween video, but it's not really long enough. Just a few weeks ago, the police found more than $300,000 worth of methamphetamine at the Texas Eagles Passport of Entry, which is across from Piedras Negras in Mexico. In a situation straight out of Breaking Bad, drug smugglers from Mexico got a very creative idea when it came to hiding their contraband throughout the month of October, which was jamming it into a bunch of condoms and stuffing them into pumpkins. A release from Customs and Border Protection notes that some CBP officers at the bridge connecting the U.S. to Mexico said that they had stopped a 2012 Ford Escape that was coming across the bridge from the Mexico side. The SUV was sent along for further inspection, and that's when authorities came across all of these seemingly innocuous pumpkins. While normally that wouldn't have been out of place around Halloween, they found something besides Halloween candy inside these pumpkins. Well, some people might treat it like candy, but yeah. But what they found was 136 condoms filled to the brim and about to burst with liquid methamphetamine. About 40 pounds of it, in fact. Our frontline CBP officers have seen just about everything there is, and this Tuesday was no exception, said the Port of Entry's acting director, Elizabeth Garduno. They utilized their training, experience, and interviewing skills and uncovered a rather novel narcotic smuggling method in the process. 
it doesn't seem that she was particularly impressed or surprised. The CBP officers took both the drugs and the car and then subsequently handed over both the vehicle's driver and passenger to the Maverick County Sheriff's Office to be interrogated after. Meanwhile, the CBP officials went on to post that, the next day in Arizona, they found about 2,100 fentanyl pills stuffed inside tamales in a cooler. Each tamale contained a baggie of blue pills hidden inside, they noted. Florida men accused of stealing $1.3 million worth of seafood. Now this is one I was going to talk about in my last Strange Cases video, so what happened? I forgot. So three men in southern Florida were arrested and accused of stealing a whopping $1.3 million worth of seafood by pretending that they were buyers for a supermarket. 33-year-old Rene Hachaveria Echemond, 26-year-old Ernesto Aguilera Baute, and 40-year-old Jose Batista Suarez were accused of carrying out a brilliant scheme in which one of them would play a fake buyer using the nickname Brian Gomez and place fake seafood orders, supposedly on behalf of a supermarket, and then go pick them up at a seafood warehouse. Eventually, that seafood supplier started getting suspicious as they tried to contact that supermarket and couldn't get a hold of anybody. When they did, they were told that nobody by that name had ever actually worked for them. Needless to say, they called the police. The police eventually went on to use CCTV surveillance footage to catch the three men. All three of them are facing seven counts of grand theft cargo totaling over $50,000 and seven counts of obtaining property over $5,000. And finally, we have cyclists charged after teen girls' prank goes awry. So there was a top cyclist named Matthew Vanderpoel who had been one of the best bets to win a recent world championship race in Australia. However, instead of doing that, he ended up flying back home to the Netherlands after getting a criminal conviction on his record. Just recently, a group of kids kept knocking on his hotel room door one night, ding-dong ditching him and running away. This was when the 27-year-old cyclist admitted that he completely lost his cool and subsequently his marbles. First, the Dutch cyclist got into a verbal argument with the two kids, who were 13 and 14-year-old girls. The police said in a statement, it's further alleged that the man then pushed both teenagers, with one falling to the ground and the other being pushed into a wall, causing a minor graze to her elbow. The Hindustan Times went on to note that one of the girl's fathers notified the police, who went on to charge the man with two counts of common assault. Vander Pohl actually started the race he was all set to win, but dropped out after about an hour or so, only to go on and plead guilty and fly home. Vanderpoel went on to give his version of events to an outlet called Sporza in a recent interview, although his account of events was pretty much the same. I went to bed early and many children in the hallway found it necessary to knock on the door continuously, he said, which was translated into English. After a few times, I was done with it. I didn't ask so nicely to stop. Then the police were called and I was taken, he said, claiming that the whole situation was a disaster. Vanderpool has plans to appeal his case, saying that he feels like he let down both his team and his country with the incident. Once again, thank you for watching my video. I hope you don't mind that I was a little less professional during this one. It's kind of hard to stay serious during a lot of these. If you found the video interesting, please give it a like. It helps out in the algorithm. And if you like stuff like this, feel free to subscribe. I said I would make this a monthly thing, and I do intend on doing that. I just got kind of caught up in other cases I was still working on. If you don't mind, go ahead and follow me on social media. I mean, you know how YouTube is with channels like this. If it ever went down, that would probably be the only way you'd ever hear from me. If you want to support the channel even further, I actually do have a Patreon account, which I keep linked down in the description below. There you can see videos both early, ad-free, and uncensored. Speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We've got Starfade, Astral, Raven, Grack, Salad, Kevin, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankis, Wafranz, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Marsh, Buffazerk, Rensenstein, Kim Peek, Lex Luther, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochy Maine, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You guys are all the best. By far, in good amounts of stuff. Thanks again to Scentbird for partnering with me on this video. Check out their links in the description below. This has been your host Kyle, thank you, and good night.